get peace of mind with the RV Advisor's extended warranty for as low as $14 per month. Visit thervadvisor.com today. This is the RV Advisor Podcast with your host, Tom Alexander. Get all the latest information, trends, advice from experts, stories from the road, and more in the world of recreational vehicles. Now, here's Tom. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the RV Advisor Podcast. I'm Tom Alexander. Today, our guest is John Gray, who's been with us before. John is the CEO of RV Share, and uh, he's speaking to us today from, get this, snowy Austin, icy Austin, Texas. And uh, John, we're glad you made it. I know we were we were trying to get you to a spot where you can get some good uh, internet connection and uh, all that. How you doing? I'm doing well. We don't really know how to deal with ice here because the weather's nice most of the time in Austin. So um, we're we're kind of playing through it today. But it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because uh, uh, I live in an area where we we only get a, a snow every uh, hundred and 20 years or something like that here in South Florida. And, and if that, it's, it's, it's one flurry that just happens to go by a palm tree. Uh, so we never <laughs> have to worry about snow and ice here in South Florida. But I know there are certain parts of the country where uh, it's certainly uncommon to get that kind of cold. I can see you're, you're dressed for uh, the weather. And, yeah. and that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, need a jacket even inside today. We've had two um, winter weather events this year in Austin. The first one was actual snow. Um, the, the novelty of it when you live in the South is, is obviously wonderful. My kids had a great time with it. They were throwing around snowballs, building snowmen. And, you know, today it's just hard to drive and the internet doesn't work. Well, there you go. But listen, we're powered through and here we are. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, we... Um, the last time we spoke was was about a year uh, about a year ago in February of uh, 2020, and obviously a lot's happened since then. We were just learning of this thing called COVID-19, just hearing it like little bits of news and everything, and then suddenly a few weeks after that, the whole world knew what it was. And how has the pandemic uh, affected RV Share? So it's, it's one of these things, I, and we, we talked a year ago, it feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Um, we've, we've been through, I would describe it as three kind of macro cycles um, economically in, in that amount of time just within our business. So we went from being a, a high growth, um, really strong business going into um, the, the pandemic, you know, when I talked to you last, to having you know, tens of thousands of bookings get canceled um, pretty much overnight. Uh, you know, to doing things like furloughing staff, um, having to cut back on expenses, you know, just to kind of survive uh, a pandemic that we didn't know how long it was going to go. But then, you know, you kind of fast forward a little bit to mid-April, we had pivoted the business to do bookings for frontline um, health providers. So like we were booking out RVs, putting them on the driveways of doctors and nurses such that they could stay home and not cross-contaminate with their families. Um, we were renting out RVs to utilities um, for infrastructure workers so they could stay at um, facilities and, and not cross-contaminate. So I, I think we learned that there's some resilience to the RV space that is different than, than other categories of travel. But then, you know, you fast forward to the end of April and people were sick of being inside and wanted to get outside and do something. Yeah. So, so what we really saw was a tremendous amount of bookings over the summer. We had, a, we had our best year by a wide, wide margin last year, um, about tripled from the year before. And, you know, even when you consider the fact that March and April basically didn't get any bookings. So it was, it actually ended up being a really amazing year. The staff that we furloughed, we hired right back. We went back to spending. It was, it was just a, a quick kind of whip around, but, you know, kind of ended the business in a great place. And, and I would say where it leaves me looking at it today is I feel like we've taken, uh, you know, our plan at RV Share all along was to make RVing, which is a great way to travel, a mainstream form of travel. Yeah. And I feel like we fast forwarded awareness and consideration of our category by about five years last year. Wow. So that's, that's the high level. 
That's amazing. And, and, you know, that's, we've seen that trend across the, the RV universe, if you will, you know, it's, it's just been incredible where people thought, uh Oh, this is the end. This is the beginning of the end. And it wound up being, uh, the beginning of a, a, a new dawn, I guess you could say, for the industry. It's been, it's been a unbelievable because, as you just said, people are realizing or they, you know, they, ran, they started to realize, hey, uh, you know, this is a safe, controlled uh, way to travel and, and visit and live or whatever, work, you know, in these RVs. And, and you know, even we here at the RV Advisor and with our our uh, offshoot nonprofit, the RVACA, you know, we've, we've sort of encouraged people to lend RVs if they're able to people on the front lines fighting COVID, you know, as isolation units. And, and it's amazing where this is all gone, uh, you know, where people have been able to, uh, you know, really lend a hand and, and then use their RVs in such a, such a positive way. So it's, it's been amazing. And I'm glad for you guys that you were able to hire everybody back, probably even more than you had, yes. you know. Um, everybody okay in the company? Everybody got through it okay? Or oh, I mean, yeah, we're, we're in a good spot. We've been, um, you know, growing well. We've been, it's been a little bit different. We haven't been in offices in nearly a year now. We, we moved out of you know physical offices in March and have been work from home pretty much ever since. And that's been different, but, but what I, I've noticed with that is a, a trend I think is, is really interesting, which is I think a lot of employers, especially in technology and in jobs that are predict, particularly conducive to working from home, aren't going to return to five day weeks in the office. And that is going to be a massive boon for the travel industry as a whole, but certainly for, for what we're doing in, in RV travel as well. Um, you know, if you have more days where you can be working, but not at the office, you're probably going to spend some of those days outside. And that's great for our business. Um, one of the things I think that has changed though is we, we used to survey our users and we found that less than 5% of them wanted Wi-Fi when they went on an RV trip that number has completely flipped. Now, almost everybody who's going on an RV trip wants Wi-Fi because the use case is different. People used to use an RV to want to get off the grid and some still do, but mostly what they're using it for is a way to work or school or whatever from yeah. the road and they want to be a bit more connected than they've been in the past. Yeah, in fact, we just did a story uh, in, in, a, in our most recent newsletter talking about um, Airstream's new floor plan. It's, it's, a, it's an office uh, essentially, and it's really on the heels of, of this whole situation where they've just, they, they had to pivot and said, you know what, so many people are using these RVs as offices, let's, let's expand the office space, let's figure out what we're going to, how we can make this uh, a, a living, breathing, moving, mobile, <laughs> uh, you know, office. And it's, it's, un, it's, uh, it's really unbelievable that, that uh, you know, people are really moving with the times. It's, it's forced us, I think, into, into that. Um, one question before we go to the break, and we want to talk a little bit more. Uh, for owners who are hesitant about renting, how does RV Share help alleviate those fears? So the way RV Share works is it works pretty similarly to how Airbnb works or, or VRBO or any of those where you, if you have an RV and want to turn it into a second source of income, you put it on the site and people who are looking to, typically groups or families who are looking to go on an RV trip will come and rent it through the site. When you rent through RV Share, you get 24-7 roadside. Um, we have an insurance partner that you secure an insurance policy through. And, um, and you have 24 seven customer support. So those are things as a renter, but also as an owner that are, that you know, kind of alleviate some of the fears around it. Uh, I'll tell you too, a lot of people come into this business as a RV owner and are concerned about, well, you know, is someone going to mess up my RV? Well, in, in a way, like that's why we have good insurance in place. But the answer is usually no. Um, in fact, um, more than half the people who rent out their RV through RV Share cover all of their ownership cost of the RV by renting it out. So it is a great way to take this asset that you have that in most cases just sitting on your driveway or in a storage facility most of the time and turn it into a second source of income. Excellent. That's great. Well, we will return with John Gray, our guest. He is the CEO of RV Share and uh, they're in Austin, Texas. And this is the RV Advisor Podcast. I'm Tom Alexander. 
back right after these words. ACA is a charitable organization protecting the rights of the RV owners. We'll work with dealers and manufacturers to ensure quality control is in place prior to delivery of an RV. Additionally, the RVACA provides assistance to disaster relief victims. Visit RVACA.org. We are back on the RV Advisor Podcast. I'm Tom Alexander. My guest is the CEO of RV Share. It is John Gray. And uh, John, you know, we were talking in the break about, boy, just all this, all this stuff going on with, with the RV industry. And, and I know that folks that use RV Share and, and they're tapped into your service, um, are there are there tips for those folks that might be interested in uh, renting? Sure. Um, you know, if you have an RV that you want to rent out, um, you know, coming to a site like RV Share, one of the things that people see, first thing they see when they come on the site to rent an RV is pictures. So mm -hmm. having great pictures of your RV, typically that include a floor plan, an exterior shot, an interior shot, all those types of things. And, you know, like really high quality pictures will get you more bookings. Um, the, the other thing is, you know, once you're on the site and having rentals, make sure you're asking your renters to, um, to review their stay, especially if they had a good one, because those are the sorts of things that will make people want to rent your RV again. Uh, you know, RV Share does that automatically. We try to get people to, to come review um, an RV after they've had a stay, but you reaching out personally as the owner of the RV who's just provided someone with this great trip that they have loved is a, is a really wonderful way to to engage them on that um, you know another thing that if you have access to it charging an incremental fee to to do dumping of tanks is is something that a lot of our owners like to do because they can make a, a nice amount of money by doing it and the renters in many cases don't want to empty the tanks themselves so that's a another thing that you know having an expansive offering of, of things that you will do to help serve the renter, I think serves you well as, a, as an owner on the site, again, if you're able to. And then, you know, the, the other things too, I, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone, but um, Mark, if you have an RV in the South or West near a med, major metropolitan area, those are the ones that book out more. Uh, you know, if you're in Phoenix, you're in Salt Lake City, you're in, you know, even South Florida, which is not South and West, but um, is nonetheless South. Those are the ones that have long booking seasons and, and book out fairly frequently. Yeah. So, you know, those are, are particularly valuable. Another thing that a lot of our owners do, and I think a lot of people think of RV rentals as drivables. We do a tremendous amount of bookings for towable RVs and about half of the towable bookings we do are delivered. So you as an owner don't have someone else taking your RV. You're actually taking it, say, to a nearby state park and dropping it off. Then somebody's just coming in and using it for you know, a week or, or whatever, and then you come pick it back up. You can, as an owner, charge an incremental fee to do the delivery. There, it's one of those things that's just such an amazing experience for a renter to be able to just show up and walk right into the RV. If it's hot outside, the air conditioner's already on, and they're good to start their vacation instead of picking it up and taking it with them. Yeah, excellent, excellent advice. Good thoughts there. And and uh, why don't you tell the folks uh, the best place? I mean, uh, you know, they they're interested in what RV Share does, and maybe they're considering doing exactly what you, uh, the platform you provide. Why don't you tell them where uh, where they can go? Sure. So, you know, if you want to learn more, you can just come to rvshare.com. There's a, a little link at the top if you're an owner where you can learn more, or if you're a renter and you just want to try out an RV. Or another use case we see a ton of is if you're interested in buying a new RV and you want to see what that model is like and do an extended test drive, um, RV Share is a great way to do that as well. And, you know, if you're able uh, to just go to the website, you can learn all of those things. 
as I, as I mentioned earlier too, so markets that are in the South and West are kind of best for, for owners. When we think about markets, we, we do a survey each year of, of travelers to find out where they're interested in going. I guess a couple of years back, we found out that there's a place in Florida called Jenny Springs, which is a really highly rated RV destination. That's a place where a lot of people like to go as is you know, the big national parks. We expect the big national parks to have a, a big bounce back this year. Um, you know, we saw a lot of people booking RVs and taking them to places that were closer to where they live. We think we'll see more of the, the longer road trips come back this year. So that's good news for places like Yellowstone and, and Yosemite and the Smokies. Great, great. Now, you know, um, I guess sometimes when you have it's like you'll ask, uh, you know, a, a, a filmmaker, you know, what movies do you watch? Or you ask a musician, what musicians do you listen to? You know, what does John Gray do away? Where does he like to go away from the day in, day out inner workings of RV share? What are some, some hot spots for you? And do, what do you like to do with your family? Yeah, so I, I mean, I love to travel. I've worked in the, the travel business for almost two decades at this point, And it has been, you know, it has really helped fuel what was already a passion in me to, to get out and, and see the world and, you know, to, to show my kids the world. So I, I think that's kind of the, what I like to spend my time doing. I spend a lot of time working and I also try to spend some time traveling. And, you know, when I'm, when I'm traveling in an RV trip, um, I'm reasonably new to RVing. I, I did it as a kid. Um, we would take them camping as a, as a kid, or our family had one. And then as an adult now, kind of using RV share and, and taking RVs myself, um, I've, I've really come to like Big Bend, which is, you know, near where I live in Texas. It's about a, a seven hour drive. Um, from Austin and a great long weekend road trip. You get to see the, you know, the clearest skies probably in the world. And, you know, you can see every star in the sky because there's not much ambient light. And, you know, we've, we've had great trips there. And then most recently, we used it kind of as a, a lot of people did during the pandemic. We had an RV delivered to a campground. Um, this is in, I guess, early May. And, and my family and I went out to, to the campground and spent a, a nice long weekend in an RV that was, it was great because it was a two bedroom RV. Um, and, you know, we don't have a car that would tow it, but we could get it delivered. And, you know, we had our own room, the kids had their own room. It was wonderful. So um, a pretty adaptable way of doing it. Um, but I, I would say too, just travel is, is my passion and it's, it's what I love to do. Right. That's terrific. And, you know, you brought up an interesting uh, point there about, about getting away from the ambient light and seeing the field of stars in the middle of nowhere. And the only place you can really kind of experience that here in South Florida is in the middle of the Everglades. You, you know, you try to get away. And, it, and, and the views are terrific, but not what they are out in the middle of Texas or maybe Montana or someplace where, you know, it's just, there's just no cities around for miles on either, any direction. And you really get that true sense of uh, uh, solitude. And, and you see that it's terrific. Well, it's, it's one of the things that I hope last with this pandemic is I think a lot of people have started to appreciate nature a lot more. They yeah. want to get out and spend time in nature. And, and that's something that, you know, is wonderful and I hope translates and, and stays post pandemic. I hope so too. We're, we're, we are, uh, you know, when you're forced into having to pivot, as we said before, with certain things in life and, and, and uh, maybe it, it gives you pause to sort of take notice of things you maybe didn't make time for before. And um, it's like, you know what, this ain't half bad, is it? So there's some, some really cool stuff. But John, again, listen, we, we really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to join us. I'm glad RV Share is back at uh, operating at 100% with, with uh, your great team over there and uh, continued success with everything you do. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, enjoyed being on again and talk to you soon. Wonderful. John Gray, our guest, the CEO of RV Share. My name is Tom Alexander. Back in just a moment. Hey, 
RV owners and those thinking about owning want to maximize the fun and minimize the hassle of buying an RV, you need GPS. It's Gigi's personal service. Our $350 package gets you, me, the expert advice, and a host of outstanding services. Visit thervadvisor.com. Hi, everybody. Tom Alexander with you back here on the RV Advisor podcast. And as always, I'm joined in this uh, segment with our guest coordinator. It is Hi, uh, everyone. Neve Carizaco. Hey, Neve. Uh, it's great to see you again. And uh, we've got a lot of things going on here in this uh, still uh, early part of 2021's first quarter as we uh, continue to add more things, develop new content and, and uh, try to really just make it the go-to for the RV consumer. And that includes our social media site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. our, 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 our site is coming on really, really well. Um, like we discussed on previous podcasts, I'm still trying to like see and hear from our consumers, our members, our followers, people that have been on the podcast um, and what they feel would be beneficial to see or utilize on our platform. Um, a lot of people are coming back excited that we will have like ways to upload photos or upload just as you watch to any other regular social media platform at the moment. Um, people are intrigued by competitions and especially to do with like the stories and the photos, things like that, that we've done before. They were very successful. Um, so yeah, we're basically just trying to see, is there anything else that anyone would like to see on our platform? Um, but yeah, super excited for it. Super excited for people to have a one-stop shop, we'll call it, for everything RV. Um, the only other piece of, you know, um, advice I was given from someone was maybe have a, like a part store, like a marketplace for RVers like we have on Facebook or any of those other platforms. Um, so, you know, RVers can like buy and sell or trade from each other. So we're going to look into something like that um, and see if we have a, you know, an a need to do something like that so yeah very very excited for how it's how it's developing terrific and why don't you let folks know where they can reach you you can reach me at mcarry at the rvadvisor.com um that's my email and then you can get me on instagram or facebook through the rv advisor so yeah you can reach me any of those through three ways terrific there she is uh, with our closing segment as always right here on the rv advisor podcast Thank you, Neve, and uh, for Neve Carizaco, I'm Tom Alexander. We thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time right here on the RV Advisor Podcast. So long, everybody. <laughs>